Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time now to talk on um, election matters, the Electoral Act, and specifically Section 84, Subsection 8. Now, lawmakers in the upper chamber of the National Assembly have begun the process to amend the newly passed Electoral Act 2022. Now, this comes as the bill for an act to amend the 2022 Electoral Act number 13 and other related matters 2022 was read for the second time on the floor of the Senate during Tuesday's plenary. The bill seeks to amend Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Electoral Act to make provision for delegates who will not be elected as ad hoc delegates to participate in the conventions, congresses, or meetings of political parties in the country. Earlier in his late presentation, Deputy Senate President Senator Ovi Omagege, who sponsored the bill, outlined some of its importance even as it relates to the lawmakers. He believes Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Electoral Act is an error that should be corrected to allow statutory delegates to participate in major party activities, especially the primaries. We have Chief Lecturer of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, J.D. Johnson, joining us this time around. Good morning to you, uh, JJ. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be with you. And good morning to, to Messi. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you, Justin. Good morning, JJ Johnson. All right, uh, the Senate uh, is making us believe that um, the Section 84, Subsection 8 is an error, and that's why they need to amend that particular section and there's all the subsection. What are your thoughts exactly? The fundamental error is the, is the attempt by the National Assembly to control internal party arrangement, attempt for them to legislate on how parties should conduct themselves. It was an error in, its, in, in itself, in its entirety. And that's why you have seen that the, the, they committed this grievous error in the process, shooting themselves in the foot. As we said it, when this was put in place, they can regulate the national elections, but on our party conduct themselves. These are explicitly stated in the political party's constitution. This matter should be left for parties to decide, and there are normal um, convention norms and practices that governs um, party convention globally. Once you are elected as an elected representative at the state level, at the state level, you participate in the state convention. At the local government level, you participate in the local government convention. At the national level, you participate in the national convention. But in the process of trying to manipulate and control the political process, because a lot of them have interest. For example, the Senate president has signified his intention to run for the presidency. And most of them in the National Assembly, either in Senate or as of rep has one political ambition or the other. So they've been overridden and been blinded by the ambition. So they want to control INEC supervision of election, the general election, and they also want to control the party's supervision of the internal primaries. And in the process, they shot themselves in the foot. Because, like I said, it's, it's a norm. Yes, you don't need any rocket science for you to tell you this, that the standard global practice in party primaries is senators, elected on the platform of the party, as of red members elected on the platform of the party, <coughs> speakers produced by the party from the various state house of assembly, and national, uh, state house of assembly members are members of the national delegate to elect the presidential candidate of any party. So these are standard, standard practice. And for them to discover, this is just one, because they have an interest. That's why they have only discovered one of the four in the bill that has been passed and signed by the president. For them to quickly amend the bill that the part that was signed into law in 2022. And the bill that is even before the, the, the before before a federal court in in, in, in a boring state with respect to resignation or non-resignation for public officials. So if you are in a hurry to pass a bill. You make mistakes. If you are in order to do anything, you make mistakes because they are in the hurry. They had four years to plan for this, and they didn't do anything on the 2022, on the 2021. They started the process to regulate the elections of 2023. 
which starts in 2022. It shows the kind of devotion and attention the crop of people who have elected and we spent the amount of money on they are devoted to managing the affairs of this of this state. If you ask me, my conclusion actually amending the act is necessary, is important because that's the normal procedure. But do the national assembly do national assembly has any role in how party conduct the affairs? No. In actual sense, without the parties, there won't be the national assembly because it is the parties that sponsor candidates for election, for them to be elected. And you can't be the National Assembly except you are sponsored by a political, by a political party. And once you win the election, you go into the National Assembly. And you now see a situation, somebody that is part of the process, that was generated by the process, wants to control the process that generated them. So it's, 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 that's why they, 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 they discovered this fault. And that's why they are running the National Skelter. And we didn't want the they went from first reading to second reading to third reading to fourth reading to even going to pass the bill and send it into the to, to, they will send it to the to the house of rep to the the house of rep to do the rule to the answer and then they will take it to the president for his assent. Uh, GD Johnson, so how then do we explain the fact that at the time the Senate had actually, in one voice, rejected you know. Uh, the request of the president to amend that part of the section. Because if you, if you look at the arguments surrounding it, you can't say you want to become, I mean, you, we're talking about partisan politics and a political appointee. So you want to become elected. You're vying for a political office. At the end of the day, you also want to still, um, you know, remain a political appointee. Yeah, I'll come to that one. I agree in totality with the National Assembly on the issue of not allowing the executive to pick the appointed aides to become the delegates. You give too much power to the governor, you give too much power. Don't forget, first and foremost, before you are elected into the National Assembly, you are elected as a delegate of the party. You are, a you are an automatic delegate. In other sense, your own. Those are people we call the super delegates in other clients. Because one, you've been you've been chosen as the flag bearer of your party, and then you tested the waters with the public. In fact, you are a popular delegate because you have been elected by the people. Your own delegate is super to any other delegate appointed within your party structure. So I agree with them on that. I I, I disagree with the president trying to bring his aid. For example, as a president, I can appoint one. 100 aides, and those aides automatically become delegates into the, in, in the primaries. So I agree with them in totality with that. Disagree with the president request for them. The area where I disagree with them is this area that you have to resign if you are appointed uh, staff. You have to resign to seek election in your visit. I think they should extend it to themselves. For example, the National Assembly protected itself. So if you are seeking election as a House of Rep member and you are not changing office, you don't need to resign. But if you are a House of Rep member and you want to become a governor, you need to resign. Or you are a Senate president, you want to run. If you require a minister to resign, to seek election into another office, then you as a senator or as a the House of Rep member or as, as an assembly member seeking to become a governor or seeking to become a House of Rep member or seeking to become a senator or seeking to become president should be designed. There shouldn't be two rules. You should resign. If you are seeking any office other than the office you are in, you should resign. All right, Jude Johnson. Uh, you to but you know what the National Assembly did? They protected themselves. They were insulated from that particular clause, which but G gives them G the right Johnson, to we're trying to understand what has actually changed. Out. I mean, we're trying to understand what has really changed because with this particular section, it has gone through almost second or almost third, um, you know, amendment process. We're trying to understand how come at the first instance. I mean, you had the Senate agreeing to, I mean, rejecting it from the first instance when the president had made it. So what changed? What's different now? 
Now, the president's proposal was to make ministers special assistants and special advisors, automatic delegates, which is what we have had since 2003, since 2001, till the Electoral Act of 2022, which makes the the commissioners, special advisors, to be part of this of the of the state congresses, and at the national level, ministers, um, special advisors, special assistants. Now, now, those ones are appointed by the president, and there is no law that limits the number that the president can appoint. So the president can go to the convention with close to an ambassador, let me use, an ambassador too. So imagine, the president appoints all the ambassadors. So let's say there are 200 countries where you have ambassadors. So the president has 200 delegates from the ambassadors. You have 40 something ministers plus special advisors close to about 60. Let me say 60 or sometimes 70. So on his own, the president has 270 delegates in his control. Now let's add a special assistant and special advisors. So you are staying in Burnley. There's every likelihood for the president through his office to have appointed close to about 500 delegates, taking those delegates to convention. Or the governors to have close to 200 delegates. That's why you have super governors. That's why the the group that has power in Nigerian political landscape from 1999 until this electoral until this electoral act of 2022, were the governors they call the shots because they are non-elected delegates either by the people doing national elections or state elections or by the party during their primaries or during their conventions. So that's what the National Assembly have done, and I support them in totality with that. You can't bring appointed aides of the governor or the president to be delegated in that election. That's not done. All right, Jude, Jude Johnson, let's look at this cause really and try to get a better perspective, you know, of that particular. It's as though this section 84 seems to be causing a whole lot of hullabaloo for not just um, the Senate or the House of Assembly, but generally politicians. Because uh, you have just said that um, it is just um, one that they have discovered then how do we know that they may not discover more lacunae in this particular scenario and that maybe they just look for every reason to just want to, you know, uh, amend? Because I was just reading tweets uh, by uh, the, the Senate president and he was uh, trying to explain all that has happened, uh, why they had to. He was saying that it is an emergency effort to ensure that nobody is denied his or her rightful opportunity as a delegate, especially the statutory delegate, and these are those who are elected. I don't know if he was just trying to uh, uh, to keep up with good faith or maybe just uh, trying to show that um, they know what they're doing, why there are seemingly several lacunae to be adjusted. One, they have no business doing this in the first instance. Let's go back to my opening remark. Because it is the party, it is Every party has its own internal arrangement that governs how candidates are selected. But it was an open key on the part of the National Assembly to legislate on how parties should conduct themselves. Each party has its own philosophy, has its own ideology, has its own principle on how things should be done. That's why it's called political parties. They have their ideology. So it's, it's, it's outside the purview of the National Assembly to make rules on how, for example, PPP will govern itself. There are some parties that have no members or how APC will govern itself. APC do not have representation in the National Assembly. New Nigerian People's Party do not have representation. Social Democratic Party do not have representation. So it is another key by the National Assembly in actual sense, what they need to do is to expand in totality that section, not to even amend it, is to expand it and leave and put a clause there that each party 
we legislate on how candidates are chosen for the elective offices in their you know you know the you know the crisis we had over consensus or not consensus when the president was requiring them because the president initially refused to assent to it it would have been the electoral act 2000 and 2021 and not 2022 but the president refused to assent to it saying that the consensus clause must be added to the primaries because what APC was looking out is for them to have a consensus. And that's why you will see in the nominations form that has been sold by APC, there is a letter of withdrawal that is required for all aspirants to sign. Now, people are making laws to suit themselves. That's just the problem we have. Now, they need to expand that section or that subsection and insert a clause to say that political parties shall make provisions and guidelines as deep fit for the conduct of primaries within the party. That should be what we are. It is not the responsibility of the National Assembly to make laws on how parties should govern or conduct or conduct themselves. The party themselves have their own constitution. And it is just because um, there are no lawyers within the party. Because if the parties, if you have the party, the, in fact, the, the legal advisors of the two parties and all the political parties, they are more important. They, right. they, have, they, have, they have no business calling themselves legal advisors. All right. What they should have told is to have approached the courts and challenged. All right, Judy Johnson, let's just the National get... Assembly, with respect to whether the National Assembly has the right to legislate on how parties should conduct themselves or whether it is the party, whether it's an internal arrangement or it's a national issue. Let's get a legal perspective to all of this now. We have a um, human rights lawyer joining us, Barrister Justice Ohuegbu. Good morning to you, Barrister Ohuegbu. Thanks for joining us on this particular discourse. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, Justice, we need to understand all the legal perspective to all of this. We have uh, the Chief Lecturer at Nigeria Institute of Journalism uh, reacting to this uh, subsection uh, 8 of the Section 84 of the Electoral Act. And he feels that um, the National Assembly has no right whatsoever to be in, indulging in um, the internal party uh, or politicking you know, of um, political parties. Yeah, um, the whole thing is just not political. Uh, you see, every person has his own constitution that uh, governs the conduct of the party campaign. How they want to conduct their nomination of primaries and all that. But you see, that is part of the problem with not having a When the political has that, they have to try to weld some of this in not to make it uh, possible for them to continue to remain in power eventually by omitting that is exactly what we have to do. Barstow Hebo will try and reconnect uh, with you again. Uh, we seem to be having a challenge uh, trying to get what it is you're saying. We'll try and connect to him in a second. But Messi, you know, Barstow Jude John, uh, I say Barstow Jude, Barstow Justice actually has put some perspective. Yeah, Although would I'm hear him. <laughs> we give you Barista GD Johnson is interested in doing that. Okay, <laughs> that would be very until nice. Until you become certified and <laughs> we call you. Yeah, but I won't take the title of a barista because I prefer the title of a collective. So, what so would you take? I prefer the title of a collective and not barista. Okay. All right. I on a lighter note, now, but Justice Abaisto, um, Justice Uhibu seems to think that um, these people are just doing it because uh, they want to uh, enjoy power in um, perpetuity because it actually affects. I know you had mentioned that, but do you really agree uh, with yeah, his I told, opinion? I told you it's because they have interest. Hmm. The, the deputy senior president um, has been uh, interested, allegedly, interested in becoming the governor of the other state. The Senate President has obtained the form to become 
the the presidential nomination form. And if you go left, right, and center, one of the senator, senator representing Kaduna Central, is as been nominated by the governor of Kaduna State to be successor. So you have senators left, right, and center um, interested in one office or the other, and other right members interested in one office or the other. So what they are trying to do is to protect themselves. And in the process of being self-oriented, you become selfish, and you are blinded. You are blinded to the larger picture because you only see from a narrow perspective. What they have done in the process of trying to shut out the executive, both at the state level and the federal level, they succeeded in shooting themselves in the foot. And that's why they quickly saw this and that this, they saw the need for them to do, to do the, the oh, amendment. All right, quickly. All so, right, quickly, Jude Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to just bought in. Uh, we understand we have um, Barrister Ohebu back. I, I hope we have a better connection here so we can get all the legal perspective. Thank you for staying with us, uh, Barrister Ohebu. You were trying to explain all of that to us before we got disconnected. Yes, what I'm trying to say is this. Um, unfortunately, uh, the National Assembly members are just trying to uh, come in by all means in order to continue being relevant in their various political parties, which is not supposed to be the, the, the business of, 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 of the national interest at all. Because political parties are on their own. I don't see the reason why these sections should be imported or imputed in, uh, into the Electoral Act. It has supposed to have nothing to do with the Electoral Act entirely. Party politics depends on their constitution. They have a constitution that governs them. So bringing such things to form part of our electoral act is a mess of our law. We should be careful and guided the way we do things because of political interest and political school gain in this country. And that is why we cannot get it right. Obia Omajege, we understand, was the person that, 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 that brought that bill to the floor of, of the Senate. So the question you should ask yourself is this. Why should he or members of the National Assembly in the first place consider such a deal to be made part of the law that will govern the whole country? It is very, very wrong. Party affairs should be handled by the party. As simple as that. Okay, but quickly, so for, for, for the issues, sake of clarity, can, we, can you quickly tell us what that part of the section. I mean, we know that there's been a lot of back and forth with section 84, but exactly for the case that you have Omo, uh, Omo Viagege uh, putting out, what exactly does this co this uh, section of the constitution talk about? No, it's not the constitution. It's a section of the electoral act. The electoral act, act I, beg your, I beg your pardon. To, yes, that they are not in a... a trying to, or they have already succeeded by, you know, in putting it or forcing it to Nigerians or political parties. What is this section talking about? He's saying that members of the National Assembly, both the Senate and the House of Reps, the President and his vice, governors and their deputies, House of Assembly members of various states, should be made statutory delegates of their parties, statutory delegates, they call it statutory delegates. I know that the, but this is supposed to be a provision of political party and not an electoral act. Electoral act should not conduct or have anything to do with the conduct of political parties' affairs. What the electoral act can do is only to guide for the smooth running of elections. So it has nothing to do with party politics. So we should be very, very careful. And unfortunately, they have succeeded because of their selfish interests and selfish ends. 
All right, Justice Uhebu, as we wrap up now, but very quickly in 30 seconds, so what should we be doing? Should Nigerians be calling for the expunging of this particular uh, subsection right now? It's which is not for the fact that the political parties are also complicit themselves. The I expect that political parties should go to court to challenge that that purported amendment. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I'm indeed, because it's uh, not supposed to be part of the electoral act for any reason. Understood. Understood. Uh, we have been speaking with um, uh, G. D. Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigeria Institute of Journalism, who joined us via Zoom, and of course, human rights lawyer, uh, barrister. Justice only able to clarify the air on this um, particular subsection 8 of uh, section uh, 84, uh, which um, a whole lot of people believe is actually uh, due to selfish interest. But then uh, we'll see how all of that plays out and we'll be uh, here to give you all of the latest um, development. Thank you once again, gentlemen. Yeah, you very much. All right. We'll take a quick break uh, right now. Uh, still uh, talking party politics, elections, and all of that. Uh, in a moment, we'll talk about the latest twist, uh, 18 political parties asking for extension, you know, because of um, the primaries and all of that. And INEC is actually saying N-O. In a moment, stay with us. <laughs>